Um, well, the drama surrounding the band rape allegation against, um, um, I mean, the rape allegation against the band by um, Sheito seems to be unending. Sheito's, um, several Twitter handles revealed that Sheito had to, um, but that she was picked up either by the band or his manager and that she could not be rich. Then an update comes from a tweet by Miss DSF where she said she spoke to Sheito and she's okay now. She said, and I quote, she was arrested and had all her things seized and left in a cell with criminals. The band team pressured her into those tweets and threatened to leave her in prison if she did not recant the allegation, end of quote. Now joining us to make sense, like I said in the morning, of this sensitive drama is a management professional, a broadcaster, and the founder of No More 234NG, an advocacy organization against sex and gender-based violence, Iweti Bakare. Hello, Miss Iweti. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. Good to have you on the show. Thank you. I know you are following this story closely because you've been a strong advocate against rape. What would you, what, what do you make of the drama? Well, it's, yeah, it's pretty dramatic indeed. What a day we've had, huh? Um, so, you know, so here's the first thing. Shaitan made an allegation against the band, what, three weeks ago or so now? Something like that. Um, an allegation that apparently happened in, I think, 2016 or so. Now, here's the thing. Everybody has the right to defend themselves. Everybody. You are innocent until proven guilty. However, here's the other thing. We also must believe survivors when they come out because nobody comes out as a joke. Nobody speaks as a joke. Nobody's going to make such an allegation. Well, some do, but they're in a very small minority. They're not, most people will not come and say such a thing as a joke or as fabrication. So what we've seen since, and that's what I don't understand. So the band are saying, the band's team, or at least his publication is saying, his publicity team is saying they want to sue her for, I think it's 100 million or whatever it is, well, that's fine. You have every right to sue her. But what you don't have a right to do is to get her arrested because the law on defamation is a law of tort. It's not criminal law. In fact, her allegation is what's criminal. His allegation is tort. So if anybody should have actually demanded for anybody to be arrested, it should have been her. That's what should have triggered off an arrest. So it's really disturbing. It's actually quite disgusting to see and read all that we've seen today. The fact that actually she wasn't, she was taken in, I think, since Tuesday. It came out yesterday. Mm -hmm. And she's since been released. And she did go missing this morning, from what we understand. All of these things are just so sinister. Why? I, I, I can't understand. If you are not guilty, why stoop to such incredulous extent to have somebody arrested, to have her, you know, we, we hear she disappeared. We don't know whether you took her, who took her. All of these things is sheer madness. Yes, yes. Sheer madness. And what it proves is the impunity that we have in Nigeria. What it proves is how survivors, and when people say, oh, why didn't you come out two years ago? Why didn't you come out 10 years ago? Why didn't you come out immediately? Well, this is why survivors don't come out. Yeah. Because the bullying and intimidation is what they fear, the finger pointing. But the good thing is, and I am happy to say this, is that if you go on Twitter, there were lots and lots and lots and lots of support for Sheita. That in itself is comforting and it shows that we are on an upward trend, although we still have a way to go. The other team you then have to call into question is the police. I don't know, and I shouldn't know the law any better than the police force. So why was she arrested? We need to know that. We need to know. The police needs to come out to the statement Irita, stating like why brought, she was arrested. The and police, what, I, I'm, I got, I'm glad that you brought the police situation into the mix, because that's what we wanted to go into. There's also a question as to why certain things are happening and they're not supposed to happen. But they've happened now, and we can see that we can't really trust the, 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 the system. And it's a very tricky situation where you can't trust the people that are supposed to be the ones protecting you in the situation. 
there's a lot of women, including myself, that's wondering because no one is safe. No one is safe. So everyone is wondering if I am in that situation, if I'm going to be the next Shay Tom, because it's not far fetched, it's not even a God forbid situation. The world that we live in is showing more and more how dangerous it is to be a woman in today's world. So now, if that happens to me, how do I protect myself? Is coming out now truly a bigger risk? Apart from worrying about the rapists, should we start to worry about the law system that is even part of the people that are oppressing victims? What would your thoughts be on that? Well, we've always, we advocates have always worried about the legal system. That's part of why we, um, you know, No More has a petition where we've gotten to, I think, 13,000 now, um, asking for the government to declare a state of emergency. We've always worried. One of the things that we constantly push for is for stronger legislation. One of the things we push for is for police training. And there are lots of organizations who are doing that, but of course, it's a vast country and there's a long way to go. And how do you begin? It's, it's, it's one of those mountains that you have to climb a little bit at a time. So the law has always been an issue, but more importantly are the law enforcers, okay? Law enforcement, AKA the police, are you an ally or are you not? Because your job is to protect and serve the nation. Your job is not to protect and serve one. That's the question here, which is why any law enforcement uh, um, institution that respects its citizens would have come out today to make a statement so that we can all know what actually happened, what is the truth, what was she arrested for, and why she was arrested. Not sort of having to, so it's constant firefighting. Hmm. Every time, and we've seen these tactics before. We have seen them before. What often happens is, a victim becomes a survivor, mm. right? As a result of being a survivor, and that's why we don't call them victims. As a result of being a survivor, they've got the strength and the courage. One day they speak out and they say, Mr. Such and Such, you did this to us, okay? As soon as they name their perpetrator, perpetrator gets up and it's typical in Nigeria. They send them a writ or a cease and disease, disease mm. which basically means be quiet, shut up, otherwise we're going to do this. So you send a rate in order to intimidate. Okay, yes. now you intimidate, they get arrested, all sorts of things happen to them, then you coerce them. And don't be surprised what will happen next, because like I said, we've seen it before. We've seen where survivors have been coerced into changing their story. So next thing you know, it comes out on Twitter or some form of social media and it says, oh no, I didn't mean it, oh, I didn't mean to say that, oh, it wasn't true, actually it was just a stunt. Well, guess what? We don't fall for that anymore. Mm -hmm. And the reason we don't fall for it anymore is because we know what it takes for survivors to come out, especially in the country like ours. I miss, so, Miss Ereti, I'm so glad you yes. brought this up, but I'm kind of happy this happened because it's more like a win-win situation for Sheyton right now because um, if we can't win, even if she's coerced or intimidated based on the rape allegation, this is a an infringement of a fundamental human right and i think a case can be pursued based on that so what will be go what will we be doing going forward even if we can't pursue the rape case and they kind of win in intimidating her are we going to be taking legal action based on infringement of fundamental human right i think you're right um I, and i like the question especially as you mentioned human rights and that's the thing her rights were infringed on and whether she goes ahead and sue or not, that's her decision. And this is also the other thing. We advocates and people in Nigeria need to know, never put pressure. We don't. We work with survivors. Do you understand? Because you must not take their agency away from them. Hmm. You must support them with your own agency. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So whether she chooses to go ahead with that or not, if she does, she has a huge support. Then not, there's money that's already been raised for her. And I just pray she has the strength to carry it through if that's where she goes. I would say, and I'm not a legal expert, you might want to get legal experts to correct me if I'm wrong, but for me, it's an illegal arrest that happened. And based on that alone, I'm pretty sure she can put in a complaint which can lead to some sort of legal redress. The rights are there. We must remember that the Nigerian law isn't just for the rich, the powerful, the well-known. 
No, the Nigerian law, the constitution was made for you, it was made for me, it was made for every single mm. one Is of us. Really? Yes, it can okay. be exhausting um, to use Mr. the constitution, Rizzi. but we must use it. Before I let you go, cause, because of time, um, let's touch on the impact of publicly shaming um, alleged rapists, do you think it has any impact at all? Because there is this conversation that's saying, even when we come out to call them, so what really happened? We even had a music journalist coming out to rub it all on our face to say, so what happens after um, this whole public shaming is done? It doesn't even stain a, their whites, right? So do you think there is an impact with a person like DeBang in the center of this controversy? Is there an impact on his person and his career? Because his white. Right, so um, again, you're asking some really good question. It's not about public shaming, actually. It's about, and if you look at things always, always, always read. When you read, when you see these things, always look at it from the point of view of the survivor. Every survivor goes through a process of healing. When part of them coming out and pointing to their perpetrator is part of the journey of their healing. So it's not about, I want to public shame anybody. Now, if we were to have a legal, a police and enforcement agency that actually does their job properly, I doubt very much if most survivors would like to come out on social media. They would rather be able, like to be able to go into the police station and know that, um, and, and, and know that the police will believe them and they'll get the legal support and the legal redress that they're entitled to, right? But that's often what doesn't happen in this country. So where are you left with? You're left with the only avenue that's within your grasp, which is social media. Now about the band. Well, I dare say no one's going to forget this. I can honestly estimate that Mr. The band, wherever you are, he's probably worried about his recent endorsement ambassadorship with um, Heritage Bank. And I have no doubt Heritage Bank four eyes open, six eyes at the back, will be looking at this very carefully and wondering about what it's going to do to their brand because it's also about brand equity. Do you want your, I mean, would Plus TV want their brand to be associated with an alleged rapist? Who wants it? So the band is very worried. So speaking out, and we always encourage survivors to speak out, whether it's a debunch or a driver, it doesn't matter. Speak out, speak out, speak out. Because the only person that benefits from your silence is the perpetrator hmm. or an alleged perpetrator. All right, so thank you. trust me, it's not about public shaming. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to forget this. And you know what the internet is like? It never forgets. Definitely. It thank you, Miss Reti, for your time and your insights on this conversation. You're welcome. Ciao. Ciao. Okay, do you want to add more? Should we move on? Because I think she's touched, mm. she's touched the everything. areas um, yeah. needed. And I really hope that... Um, she also has strong backing to actually work on what Ifeoluwa has said because mm. basically this is, is an infringement on her fundamental human rights. Yeah. But does she have the resources to mm -hmm. actually pursue this case? And mm. will the system back her as well? Because if a police is being used to protect, uh, is it protect now or to uh, put pressure on her as well? Then where exactly is she going to run for protection when these people, that's, if that's the case in this situation, are trying to put so much pressure mm -hmm. on her and even get to the point maybe to threaten her life? Yeah. So I, I don't I know. I think the reason I can add is that I think I started this, this, um, this day with a bit of like losing a bit of hope, like I mentioned in the morning, especially when some, when um, Joachim said to our faces that your efforts are rubbish. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I think what Ereti has done is kind of counter that a little bit for me that, um, yes, our wins might be very little, but it's still there. Yeah. And that they, we, if we just keep at it, we keep at it, maybe if we're lucky, our wins will become more. But And that, you know, I shouldn't necessarily give in to yeah. the int intimidation, I whoever like the you fact are. That, um, a lot of women, not even, don't let me make it a gender thing, now, mm. a lot of people are rallying around her to support her because mm. obviously if this is a case of bullying, bullying or intimidation, then we must get to the bottom of this regardless. Yeah.